let us keep a moment of silence and prepare ourselves for this morning worship Let us pray. God, who unites everyone, God, who united the church, we are very grateful for our church of South India. Thank you for your continuing grace for these 75 years of the church's union. Lord, continue to be with us and with the unity. Let our CSI be a model to the churches in the world. Continue to bless us, Lord. Lord, we are here to thank you for your presence and protection all these years and the all these days lord you be with us you present among us you talk to us through your word we submit this time and the remaining time in your mighty hands in jesus name we pray amen let us all stand for the opening hymn from church hymnal 4 come let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne Church Hymnal 4. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are kept, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all say together the Gloria, glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Almighty God, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Come, must be on. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our Lord's summary of the law and the prophets. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength this is the great and first commandment and the second one is you should love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than this on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets together to hear God's most holy word and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace, that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith. You who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and peace with your neighbor and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God, and talking around from now on in his holy ways, make your humble confession to the compassionate God, that you may be reconciled and you to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, we confess that you have sinned against you and our neighbor. We have walked in darkness rather than in light. We have named the name of Christ, but we have not departed from iniquity. Come mercy upon us, we ask you, for the sake of Jesus Christ, Forgive us for all of our sins. Cleanse us by your Holy Spirit. Quicken our consciences and enable us to forgive others that we may hereafter serve you with your newness of life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Though so your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though so they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Almighty God, our merciful Savior, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters, and with heartfelt repentance and true faith, turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's continue to pray. Today's collect, CSA Formation Day, Unity in Worship. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, we thank you for the gift of the Church of South India. Grant that the Church may see the vision more clearly and embody the unity in faith and witness more courageously in the pluralistic context. May the worship of the Triune God cleanse our prejudices of caste, color, gender, and language, and we may be united by your love that surpasses all our understanding. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today's lesson will be read to us now. in Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, 
the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was laying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to a paralytic, Your sins are, sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Here ends the gospel read, praise be to God. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. What a great joy and privilege it is for us, O Lord, to be led into thy holy presence because of the great desire of thine that we need to be blessed. We praise and thank thee for thy love and thy concern towards us that you brought us into your holy presence that we may take on more of thy image and thy likeness in us that we may continue Lord to surrender more of ourselves in order that the righteousness of thine which you meted out on the cross for us may be gained. And so now, Father, as we make a surrender in thy holy presence, we pray that you may enable us to see thee more clearly, to hear thee more yearningly, to feel thee more nearly, and above all, to love thee more dearly. May the words of, our mouth, my, of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be holy and acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen and amen. Greetings once again to every one of you who have been inspired and led by the Holy Spirit to be found in this holy sanctuary, maybe as we draw to the close of another month in our lives. Our very presence here is because he has predestined this particular event in our lives. God's great desire is to meet his children. And so as we are gathered here in his holy presence, I thank the Lord for this great opportunity given to me to deliver his holy word to you. I believe that according to 
Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God, which is active and powerful, will definitely bear fruit in our lives as we adhere to it and as we surrender to it. In all the years of my ministry as a servant of God, my greatest realization of God is this. I felt it very necessary to share this experience with you. And as a servant of God, the greatest realization that I have experienced in my life is this, that it is only my concept of God, the concept of God that I have within myself is that which determines my approach to him. What kind of a concept I get into my mind is that which determines the way I approach him. In other words, I could say that the way we view God, the way that you and I view God, greatly influences the way we approach him, the way we adore him, the way we admire him, the way and the manner in which we are prepared to ask of him, the manner in which we are able to show our attachment with him, and above all, to admire and to attend what he has to say to us. It is this concept of ours greatly influences us in all these aspects of life. So this morning, I'm here to ask you to have a great ardent desire, to have a great concept about this God whom you have approached this morning. In the, in the gospel reading read to us, if you have your Bibles, kindly turn with me. To Mark chapter 2, verse 5. And I just want to take one little statement there and dwell as to what we could derive from this particular passage. When Jesus saw their faith. This is the sentence or the statement that I would like you to focus upon when Jesus saw their faith. We have all come into his presence with faith. With faith. Definitely every one of us have come with faith in order that we may be blessed. And the word of God this morning reminds us that even as those four who were there, carrying a lame man into his holy presence, their faith which they exhibited upon him, Jesus saw their faith. And he is the unchanging Christ this morning who is here to see what faith we are having upon him when Jesus saw their faith. It means that Jesus noticed their faith. It means that Jesus recognized their faith. It means that Jesus was prepared to reward the faith which they had exposed towards him. And four men carried him, carried this lame man. And Jesus admired 
the faith that these four men were able to reveal in regards to their great concern upon this man. As I just looked into this passage and as I began to focus more of my attention upon it, I was able to realize that they were not just formal believers. They were not formal, but they were fervent believers. They had a purpose, they had a burden, they had a great yearning to see what God could really do in the life of this man. And so they were not formal believers, they were fervent. They were not believers who were very easily disappointed, dejected and defeated. Because when they approached Jesus, there was a great crowd of people. They were not even able to, to push forward. They were not able to forge ahead. They were not able to bring this lame man to Jesus. But they did not get so easily dejected or disappointed, or neither did they feel defeated. Our purpose has really been defeated. But instead, they were determined. They were determined to fulfill this very purpose of them having carried this man so far. They were, in fact, determined. They were very much desirous that they would receive the miracle that they expected. And they very much depended upon Jesus. That's the type of disciples these people were, these four were. And so, beloved in Christ this morning, there is a great request that I would like to place before you. Each one of us gathered here. Whenever we come to church, I pray and I urge you that every one of us may have a commit, make a commitment with ourselves. Let us make a commitment with ourselves each time we come into God's presence saying, I will not go home until I have received from my Savior. I will not go home until I have received from my Savior, until I see this miracle being performed in my life, until I receive from his gracious and merciful hands. Each time we come into God's presence, let us make a commitment with ourselves saying, I will not go home until and unless my Lord places this blessing that I have come to seek from him. Yes, beloved in Christ, maybe this was the temperament of those four men, even though they had this great hurdle before them, we find that they were undeterred. They were very firm in. And so this morning, we have come into God's presence. I believe that we could say to ourselves, I'm not going home until I come out of my bondage. I'm not going home until I come out of my bondage. I will not go home until I am delivered from this problem, this anxiety, this fear, from this pressure that I seem to experience. I will not go back home. I will not go back home until I get the blessing that I need. I will not go back home until I have been released from these weaknesses, from these sinfulness of mine. I will not go home back until I have received. Yes, beloved in Christ. No disappointment. I will not go back home 
with discouragement because i have come to receive i believe that the, the lord who saw the faith of those four men and rewarded he didn't even reward nothing is stated about the faith of the man who was carried but instead the bible mentions about the faith of the four men who carried that man in faith and this is what we meditate upon this morning when jesus saw their faith the unchanging christ who is the same yesterday today and forever is the one who is looking into your faith into your hearts as the faith that you have come to reveal and to expose to him this morning no matter what your burden no matter what your problem no matter what your sickness or your trial may be he is here with his compassionate eyes his eyes were always filled with compassion looking upon each and every one of us as to the faith that we have come to reveal towards him second note that i would like to draw your attention to is whenever we come to christ we are always bound to face hindrances and hurdles there is something that would could, could always prevent us from doing so so this particular passage tells us reveals to us that even as they came to reveal their faith there were hindrances there were hurdles there were odds there were obstacles but yet they remained undeterred they wanted to pursue what they had deep within their hearts they knew the anguish they knew the pain they knew the anxiety there are bound to be hurdles and obstacles but beloved in christ this morning maybe there are certain hurdles that are before you and me there are certain obstacles there are certain odds there are certain hindrances and you may not know it for yourself but i am not able to forge ahead because i am facing these hurdles in my life but beloved in christ so often it could be the hurdles that prevent us from receiving his blessing could be something deep down within our hearts and our lives it could be a hurdle of our pride it could be of our our temper our unbelief maybe of our self dependency maybe because we are monetarily sound it could be our lonely loneliness it could be our frustration name it whatsoever there are so many hurdles and obstacles that could be preventing us from receiving from the lord but don't give up jesus is just near they were facing those obstacles and hurdles but nevertheless jesus was so near to them and they were not going to allow those hurdles and those obstacles to prevent them from receiving what they desire to receive and maybe this morning that's what the lord is expecting from you and from me no matter what your hurdles and your hindrances no matter what odds or obstacles are before you jesus is expecting you and me to open up and the third point that i would like to place before i draw my message to a close I want you to open yourself up to every bit of God's power. I urge and I beseech you beloved in Christ to open up to every every bit every inch of your being to God's might his love his compassion and his power so that you may 
attain and achieve what you have come to receive from the Lord. When Paul writes to the church of Ephesian, Ephesia, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, is the verse that quite often impels me, instigates me, invigorates me, all the more because there is this prayer that he makes to the, for, the, for the Ephesian church, and it is for us this morning. And I pray that you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. In this particular epistle in verses 18 and 19, there is great hope that is given for you and for me. You know, Paul says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, firstly, he says, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. This is what I'm praying for this morning, that you may have a spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him of what a great, mighty, merciful God he is, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, the one who has called to bless and give us the hope. What are the riches of, of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And now most essential of all, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? That's what God expects from you and from me. Through his power, have the eyes of your hearts enlightened and learn of the immeasurable greatness of his power towards we who believe. So come on and draw out from this power because he is present here. Draw out from his power because his promise is here. Draw out from his power because of this great power that he wish, wishes to bring and reveal in our lives. Don't shut yourself up to any of God's power that flows through us through Christ Jesus. He saw their faith and he sees yours too. Beloved in Christ, when I went through the scriptures, I seen how God not only saw their faith, but he even admired their faith and he even rewarded their faith. When he looked at the, at, at, at the centurion, we find that he marveled. And he said, he said, Lord, I, I, I'm not worthy to have you under my roof, but you just say one word and that would suffice. And God admired his faith. When the Syrophoenician woman, woman who met the Lord, and when he said it is not right to give the food which are for the children, and when she said yes, but the dogs even eat of the crumbs that fall under the master's table. He saw through her words and he rewarded her, beloved in Christ. Why not surrender like this man? Why not surrender our faith like this Syrophoenician woman to make this a great opportunity to receive what you have come to receive this morning? And when we see this passage ending, that's the exuberance that I derived. You know what happened? And, and he rose and immediately picked up his bed and he went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never 
We never saw anything like this. Can you and I become an opportunity for others to declare what has happened in your life and in mine, for what we have received, that others may say, give Jesus this opportunity in surrendering, no matter what your problem, your anxiety, your fear may be, that people may declare, we have never seen anything like this at all. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you that we could come with our faith, no matter how weak it is, because you are the author and perfecter of our faith. You have spoken to us, Lord, and there are many here who need to receive a change of circumstance, the liberation that they need, healing. There are many, Lord, who are crying out desperately deep down within their heart for this particular need of theirs to be met. It has been destroying their health. It has stolen much of the joy of life. But I believe, O oh Savior Jesus, the unchanging one, you would meet the need of this, thy son, thy daughter, who, has, who is at this moment exposing her faith and saying, Lord, I believe that I would also receive a miracle as you had performed in the life of that lame man. I surrender myself. Work out your marvelous works that I may also bring more honor and glory to thee. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. May God who spoke to many, he said, even according to your faith, be it done unto you. May he repeat those same words to every one of us gathered this morning. My son, my daughter, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Amen and amen. Let us all stand to affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and was pontified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the Father. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of St. John's family, we thank Reverend Richard Reed Ayer for the wonderful sermon. Thank you, Ayer. 
29th September 2021, Wednesday, we will be having a special Holy Communion service at 4 p.m. On that service, our CSI moderator, the Most Reverend A. Dharamraj Rasalam, will declare our St. John's Church as St. John's Cathedral. All are invited for the service. Kindly register your names to church WhatsApp groups. Since October 1st is on Friday, we will not be having worship service in the church. Online worship will be streamed through YouTube. Birthdays and wedding anniversaries during this week. Birthdays, 26 September, Mr. Shalin Shrey Tiga, Mr. Vijay Anand, Mrs. D. Saral Tenmoli, Mr. Paul Samuel Josephus, Mrs. J. Angeline Paul. 27th September, Mrs. Rennie Weston, Lieutenant Colonel C. Kashkar Raj, Ms. Johanna Shirley, Dr. John Sukumar, Mr. D. Samuel Raja Sekhar, Mrs. Paris Stephen, Dr. S. Sudarshini. 28th September, Dr. Ranjini Jabakumar, Mrs. Haina Samson, Mr. B. Joshua Francis, Ms. L. Sneha Sharon, Daniel A.S. Mr. Abhishek Timothy. 29th September, Dr. Vandana Parnivelu, Mrs. Susila Apadurai, Ms. G. Deepthi. 30th September, Mr. V. J. P. Anbarath, Ms. Jerusha Mohan, Mr. Kishore, Kishore David Rajarajan. 1st October, Mrs. Damayandi Kanagaraj, Mr. Jeffrey Anuraj Murak, Dr. Mercy Bernard. 2nd October, Mr. G. Adhisiam Samuel Gyanadas, Mrs. Priya William, Mr. T. Jnana Sigaran, Mr. Daniel, Mr. Benjamin Sambath, Mr. Agnes Amrita, Dr. Marcus Deepan Bhuminathan. 3rd October, Mr. Gerald C. V. Diamond, Engineer Nishal John, Mr. Vijay Dandraj, Mr. John Winston, Mr. Amrit Sagar, Mr. Jason Samuel. Wedding anniversaries during this week, 28th September, Mr. John Jaspal and Mrs. Nithya Kazia. Mr. Alistair Weston and Mrs. Cheryl Weston, Mr. R. Susai Raj and Mrs. Regina, Mr. James Rajesh Kumar and Mrs. Esther Prem Kumari, 29th September, Mr. Clifford and Mrs. Anand, Mr. D. Sam Helvaraja and Mrs. Esther Vijay Kumari, 30th September, Mr. B. I. C. Bakiraj and Mrs. Ruth, 1st October, Wing Commander Clement and Mrs. Jemima. Dr. Rup Kumar and Mrs. Beulah. On behalf of St. John's family, we wish them many more blessed years. Offer to him from Church Hymnal, hymn number 160. Once, only once, and once for all, his precious life he gave. Church Hymnal 160.
praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all for the benefit. Enter his gates with sanctuary and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Lord, you have given so much to us. Help us to give ourselves to you. Take our lives and let them be consecrated to you. To Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Let us send him to pray for those who celebrate birthday and wedding anniversary. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time. Lord, we submit everyone who is celebrating their birthdays, their wedding anniversaries, and those who remember special days. Lord, Lord, you be with them, you bless them, and you continue to guide them with your wisdom. Lord, especially we submit those who are celebrating their birthdays. Lord, you are so faithful to them, and you were with them all these days. We thank you for adding one more year to them as they step into this new year. You be with them and bless them. Let this new year bring new joy, new hope, and new blessings in their life. And Lord, we pray for those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. Lord, you be with them in their togetherness. Let this new year bring lots of love in their life. And you provide them lots of occasions and which will bring them together in you and as a family. Lord, we submit and we bless each family in your name, Lord. Lord, you bless them. You shower them with your blessings. You be the head of the family and you continue to guide them. And Lord, we also pray for those who are remembering special occasions in their life. But thank you for those occasions. You continue to guide them and continue to bless them with your words of wisdom and knowledge. We submit each and everyone in your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.